Suddenly, a bullet from an unknown sniper strikes him in the abdomen. Isaac then makes a daring attempt to save Matthews by running in a zigzag path avoiding the shots. Unfortunately, the sniper shoots him in the right knee, and he jumps behind a broken wall to take cover. The movie begins in Iraq in 2007, towards the end of the American-Iraqi war after President Bush declared the end of the ongoing battle between Iraq and the United States. Following that, reconstruction operations got underway. Staff Sergeant Shane Matthews of the United States Army and a sniper, Sergeant Alan Ize Isaac, are dispatched to investigate an attack on a pipeline construction site in the country's desert. At the construction site, they discover the bodies of six workers and two security escorts. Matthews and Isaac have taken refuge on a hill near the construction site. Matthews appears tired, and he informs Isaac that there's no movement. They've been watching the site for the last 20 hours. He has grown impatient and believes there are no enemies, assuming that the Iraqi soldiers must have retreated after the attack. He informs him that, based on the dead bodies of construction workers and soldiers, eight construction workers got shot in the head in less than 30 seconds. And after that, one third of his fellow soldiers were also killed. On the other hand, Isaac disagrees, believing this is the work of a very proficient sniper and that he may still be out there waiting to take out more of them. He thinks they may be dealing with Juba, an infamous sharpshooting Iraqi sniper. However, Matthews is dismissing it, claiming that no Iraqi sniper can be that good. They both wait another two hours, but Matthews believes there is no threat after 22 hours of monitoring for activity. He informs Isaac that he'll investigate the location and depart after he obtains the radio. He walks to the place while Isaac keeps an eye on him. Meanwhile, Isaac loses eyes on him when his scope fogs up. Matthews chews him out for not replacing it, indicating that this particular scope has been faulty. He tells him he should throw it away, but Isaac claims it belongs to Dean, his former comrade, and has sentimental value. Matthews's jokes about carrying a dead man's scope will bring bad luck. He then continues inspecting the dead bodies, distraughtly telling Isaac that everyone has been shot in the head, a sign that a marksman took them out. Isaac suggests he get out of the place as soon as possible. Despite Isaac saying so, he stands in the middle of the site and tries to figure out the probable direction of the shots. Suddenly, a bullet from an unknown sniper strikes him in the abdomen. Isaac then makes a daring attempt to save Matthews by running in a zigzag path avoiding the shots. Unfortunately, the sniper shoots him in the right knee, and he jumps behind a broken wall to take cover. Matthews asks him to call for help on the radio, but he can't move due to his injuries. To stop blood flow, he first ties a tourniquet around his thigh and then tries to contact the base using the radio. However, the bullet has also broken his radio antenna. On the other hand, Matthews makes a feeble bid to reach for his rifle and shoot at the sniper despite Isaac's warning that the sniper will kill him if he does so. Nevertheless, as Isaac attempts to help Matthews find the sniper, he summoned the courage to remove the bullet from his knee and bandage it. He yells at Matthews, but he receives no response. He realizes that Matthews is passed out after suffering massive blood loss. Later, Isaac himself passed out from exhaustion against the wall. After a while, he regains consciousness after receiving communication from an officer in their base on his transmitter. He reports their dire situation to the dispatch, requesting extraction and medicine for himself. However, he becomes suspicious when the dispatcher asks him to expose himself by shooting or standing up so they can determine his location, as this is against protocol. After this, he hears a flaw in the dispatcher's accent. He realizes that the sniper has access to the American base radio frequencies and has been trying to trick him into revealing himself. When he realizes this, he's devastated. Despite blowing his cover, he still asks Isaac to keep talking as he wants to know more about him. The sniper threatens Isaac that he will reshoot Matthews if he doesn't communicate with him. Therefore, he approves and asks the sniper to view this as a window of opportunity. Then, he begins to gaze through the scope to establish the sniper's location because he can't see any cover. Following a brief pause, the sniper asserts that he is just an average Iraqi, but he doesn't believe him. During their conversation, Isaac is measuring his location and attempts to deduce it. In addition, he makes fun of the sniper by telling him that he's taking the lives of people working to advance their country. When the sniper hears this, he chuckles and responds by saying that he's aware that the money isn't intended for his nation but for the United States. During this period, he looks through the belongings of his deceased partner and listens to the radio. He then tries to grab it to get a hold of his station and ask for assistance. When the sniper asks him about his family, he refuses to answer. The sniper then threatens to reshoot Matthews if he doesn't tell him. He then calls his bluff, to which the sniper responds that he's not surprised. After all, Matthews is Isaac's second loss after Dean. 
He's then shocked that the sniper has this information. After a while, Isaac quenches his thirst with water from his bottle but discovers that the sniper's shot has made a hole. The sniper is conscious of his situation as he reveals that he purposely shot his water bottle, radio antenna, and knee. The sniper explains that he did all of this to him to prevent him from escaping the location, and he also says that he will soon pass out due to the injuries he sustained. Isaac spends time attempting to find the sniper and determine what kind of weapon he's using. He calls the sniper a terrorist, and the sniper finds this doubtful as it is he who is in another person's country. After looking through his scope for a while, Isaac finally discovers the sniper hiding in a pile of trash. Analyzing the harsh conditions, he concludes that the sniper is a professional and proclaims that he's Juba, the angel of death, who they haven't found yet. However, the sniper denies being Juba and claims to be an ordinary Iraqi man. After hearing this, Isaac tells the sniper that he must have been a member of the United States Army at one point but has now defected and is working against them. The sniper, however, chuckles at the idea and tells him that the only people he kills are those who attack him first. Soon after, Isaac collapses to the ground due to his tiredness and dehydration. Then, the sniper inquires about Dean, and Isaac explains how he is acquainted with Dean and his family members. After that, the sniper promises Isaac that after he has passed away, he will degrade his corpse by chopping off his face and nailing his tongue to his chest. In the meantime, Isaac attempts to draw the sniper's fire by wrapping his jacket and cap around a stick, which would reveal his location. Unfortunately, this plan is unsuccessful, and Isaac eventually passes out due to tiredness. At a later point in time, when Isaac has exhausted all his other choices, he makes a reckless dash at a nearby dead soldier to discover whether the soldier's bag contains anything useful. However, as he makes his way back to the wall, the sniper opens fire on him, bringing down half of the wall and damaging Dean's scope. The sniper informs him that the radio, for which he put his life in danger, is no longer functioning correctly. Then, the transmission is cut off in the middle of the sniper talking to him. He doesn't understand at first, but he figures out very quickly that it's Matthews, and he's relieved to see that he's still alive. He yells at him and tells him the location of the sniper. Matthews then removes a shiny emblem from his pocket and looks at the trash heap while Isaac attempts to distract the sniper. The sniper then confesses that he's a teacher and that the Americans killed his students, which prompts him to begin his vendetta against the Americans. On the other hand, as a gust of dust covers start to envelop the location, Matthew takes advantage of this opportunity to slowly reach for his rifle. At this point, the sniper threatens to shoot Matthews, even though he's unaware that Matthews is awake. After that, Isaac explains that he keeps the scope with him all the time because he failed to shoot the sniper who killed Dean. On the other hand, Matthews is trying to make the most of his opportunity by shooting blindly at the heap. As he crouches closer to the wall, the sniper fires a bullet that strikes him in the left shoulder. Despite Isaac pleading with the sniper to spare Matthew's life, he can take his life by shooting him in the head as he approaches the wall. Seeing this, Isaac breaks down and begins to cry. Isaac then expresses a desire to return home, but the sniper tells him he'll let him go, but he doesn't believe he wants to go home. When he asks Isaac to reveal why he's still in Iraq, Isaac breaks down. He confesses that he's the one who killed Dean. He says he tried to shoot at an enemy sniper playing possum, but he shot through Dean instead. He also says that he has been lying to everyone about what happened. While speaking with the sniper, he hears some noise from the radio transmitter. Without pausing their conversation, he crawls up to the radio and attempts to make contact with the base. Unfortunately, the radio has suffered severe damage, so he can only listen in on the conversations and can't make a call for assistance. Suddenly, he overhears the sniper calling out his name to the base to get assistance. It finally dawns on him, and he realizes that the sniper has constantly communicated with the US base, pleading for additional aid the whole time. After a while, Isaac wakes up and shrugs off a crow pecking at his leg wound. He then obtains Matthew's rifle and sets it up, intending to shoot down the sniper. Just as he sets up, he notices a helicopter approaching the area. He pushes down the wall protecting him and aims at the trash heap. The sniper reveals he has been playing possum the whole time. Although he can't see Isaac due to the dust caused by the fallen wall, he takes two shots at the soldier but misses them both. Isaac then takes his shot back at the trash heap but can't determine if he has hit his mark. He then rises from his position, and nothing happens to him, so he thinks that his shot is accurate and that the sniper is either hurt or dead. Soon, the helicopters land behind him, and the soldiers carry him on a stretcher. He's trying to inform them about the hiding sniper but can't communicate with the officer properly. After the helicopter takes off, the sniper suddenly starts shooting the soldiers one by one before Isaac can warn those soldiers about him. The pilot gets shot, and the helicopter goes down, crashing on the ground and killing everyone on board. 
The movie ends with the sniper calling the American soldiers headquarters and asking for another rescue team. He then disguises himself as an American soldier and sets up a new ambush. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.